Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and TechAdvice.life video. I'm joined today by James Calvert. Hello. He, hi. He is an award-winning VR designer, director, researcher, and lecturer at Torrens University in South Australia, where we happen to be at the moment. Welcome to the program. Hello. Good to, good to be here. Well, thank you very much for your time. Now, before we get on to your uh, impressive achievements, what is the state of virtual reality as we stand here at the start of the third decade of the 21st century? And, you know, how is VR being impacted by augmented reality, which they, you know, have now intermixed with mixed reality, and also which they're now calling extended reality? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I work mostly in, in virtual reality, which mm -hmm. sits right at the sort of far end of the sort of reality, virtuality continuum. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm certainly most um, occupied by fully um, removing reality and replacing it with something completely virtual. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the current state of play is, you know, we have some, we have good hardware now, which can provide quite immersive experiences um, with, with high feelings of, of presence, that mm -hmm. feeling of um, not being in the real world, but being present in the virtual world. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's, that's ticking along quite nicely. Um, and I guess we're still sort of playing a, a bit of catch up in terms of creating experiences in the design language and, um, you know, like to use cinema, for example, we have over a century of, um, of learnings when we, we go to make movies mm. because people expect certain things. We have t tools and methods and, and theories that we can work from. And I guess in, in VR, Specifically, it's still evolving. It's still, it's still, we're still working on that. So, um, are you an Oculus guy or a, a Vive guy? <laughs> uh, I'm a, okay, I'm a Vive guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's uh, that the platform has matured beautifully over the past few years. It has, it has. It's had, it's what we have set up here in this in the studio that I like to use. Um, look, size and 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 weight will always will be an issue for the short, you know, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I find the Vive gives me the kind of experience that I. I need, yep. but I'd like to design too, yeah. And uh, you know, how has VR revolutionized the educational experience for students? Well, yeah, it's, that's, I mean, that's my personal area of interest. Mm -hmm. um, I guess VR can, has opened the door for new kinds of educational experiences. Uh, the you can I, walk on Mars, for example. You can walk on Mars, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's kind of like a virtual field trip, mm. but it's, it's, you know, if you remember back, well, when I remember back when I was a, a child at school and we would go on field trips and those, those memories really stick with me and the things that I learned really, really hit home and, mm -hmm. and were valuable to me. Um, but it's not always possible to go on those field trips. I mean, sure. you can't always go on a field trip to Antarctica. And mm -hmm. even if you could, you couldn't stand on the pack ice because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Whereas VR gives us that experience. But it's not only just, I could tick the box, I went to Antarctica in VR. It's that we can have a more personal experience. We can be at the center of that story. Uh, we have a more embodied experience mm -hmm. where we are no longer ourselves. We are someone else, a polar explorer, for example, or a deep sea diver or, an, or a Martian. Um, and we can, you know, have a heightened emotional connection with mm -hmm. what's happening and potentially all of these things can then lead to a heightened educational experience where we learn more and, and um, we retain information longer. And unless the aircon is on, it's not that cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we're working on a few, each sense at a time here. I'm sure That's it. we'll get that one uh, coming along shortly. Yeah, well, I mean, we still haven't got smell vision after all these years uh, that we're uh, talking uh, about it. And it maybe comes, that's a good thing. <laughs> smell vision comes around every April Fool's Day. That's right. Yeah, that's on the right. TV. Now, in the background, we can see your, as you unreleased, you're working on this uh, Thin Ice VR project, which I'll get you to explain about mm -hmm. in a moment. But you also had a project in 2017 called Kokoda VR, yeah. for which you won an award. So tell us a bit about that and, and the award. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not claiming any credit for any awards on, on that one. <laughs> um, Kokoda VR was a 40-minute educational VR experience mm -hmm. uh, about the Kokoda track and the Kokoda campaign in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, it was produced by the ABC. Um, through their behind the news department, they sort of they led the project. Uh, I came on and brought the university on board um, to um, turn into a bigger collaboration and bring some research into this project as mm -hmm. well. 
Uh, I went over to the Kokoda track to, with the ABC to capture material, uh, to create a very authentic experience because it is the actual track, but mm. sort of digitized. Uh, and that's gone out into schools and it's available for free for anyone who's, who's interested. I was going to say, can people still experience yeah, that? Yeah, How do they do that? Is uh, it it's available on the, on the Steam store, for on example, store, and you yeah. can install it. And well, I certainly recommend using it on a, on a Vive or an Oculus or something like that, mm -hmm. where you get the full room scale experience. Mm. You can go around and pick up objects as if you're really there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then that's done really, really well. So the, the response from students and schools has been very positive. The ABC, um, they were nominated, nominated for a, a Walkley Award for that one, wow. I believe. Yeah. So that's done quite well. Uh, and then uh, as a researcher, I've taken that out into schools, um, had students use it, and then you know they've been tested on what they learn afterwards, and uh, we collect other sort of data and do focus groups and kind of really analyze what it is that makes that kind of virtual learning experience so valuable. Mm. And that's actually what's informed um, Thin Ice, right? So Thin Ice applies some of the same techniques that we used in Kokoda, um, but we're really trying to push it to that next level. And so yeah, tell us a bit more about the Thin Ice project and when it's due to launch and where it will be launching, etc. Uh, okay, so Thin Ice is, um, is in production right now. Uh, it's being produced by Monkey Stack, which mm -hmm. is a, um, a mixed reality studio here in, in Adelaide. Uh, they also do animation and video games. Uh, and by Tim Jarvis, who is a polar explorer. Mm -hmm. um, the Mawson of the 21st century. Yes, yeah, he's been, he's been Mawson. He's been Shackleton as well. So right. uh, Thin Ice is actually based on the Sir Ernest Shackleton expedition, mm -hmm. uh, his ill-fated expedition mm -hmm. in 1915. He set out to cross Antarctica and- He fell um, through Thin Ice? He fell, no, they didn't. No? They never. Well, sometimes, well, occasionally, someone fell through the yeah. ice. But he, Shackleton and his crew of twenty-eight men, uh, when their ship sank, um, were trapped on the pack ice in Antarctica, and in an almost two-year journey, um, epic journey, they no one died. They all managed to to sort of win their freedom by sailing across the Southern Ocean in a lifeboat. It's like Survivor, except for real, except it's, not on an island, but on a winter yeah, wasteland. I'm not doing it any justice no. at all, but it's one of the greatest stories of leadership and survival ever. Yeah, um, I should read about it. I mean, they should make a TV show. Where's Netflix making yeah, the... Yeah, well, you know, there's been a few attempts. things. This is going to be the best. Anyway, right. so Thin Ice is uh, where you get to be on the ice with Shackleton. Right, so this is it. This is the VR experience, yeah. right? Yeah, this, okay, so I'm sorry, a... I, I probably read it, but I'm just forgetting it all now no, as I'm no, talking no. to you. <laughs> this behind me on the TV is just, a, it's a demo. It's a proof yeah. of concept yeah. we produced right at the very start of the project. Uh, and what we've done is we've sent a team to Antarctica and to South Georgia Island to walk back in Shackleton's footsteps mm. and capture material using photogrammetry, which is a camera technique of scanning areas and then building 3D models and 360 footage, and in Thin Ice VR, you get to walk in his footsteps and follow those locations and, and see the story happen around you, see Shackleton next to you and the crew, mm. um, and visit these places. But Thin Ice is also about climate change. Mm -hmm. Shackleton's epic adventure was over 100 years ago, mm. and the places that he went to, that we go to in Thin Ice, just don't look the same anymore. Uh, particularly the glaciers on South Georgia Island. They've shrunk? They've shrunk. Yeah. They've retreated significantly. So uh, what we show is uh, at what was an obstacle for Shackleton when he was trying to win his freedom, um, safety, was to cross a, a glacier, mm. right? Um, and now when we go back, that glacier is, is no longer there and it, it, it's just sort of ankle deep um, meltwater coming off the glacier. So. Mm. We highlight that change and we don't just talk about it, we put you where that glacier is and was. Mm -hmm. And we can show you in, in because it's three dimensional, we can mm -hmm. show you here you are and above you is where the glacier used to be. And there's the ghost of Shackleton walking across. So you right. get- Way up there because it was, it was way a nice up there, that's yeah, right. Yeah. And you get a the full sense of, of scale, the magnitude of what's happening, which you can't get in any other medium. Sure. And, you know, of course, if you went there, as you said before, you had to go there, you'd be freezing your butt off. Yeah. You just, it's not the same as, as being able to share this experience with so many people. That's right. It's the magic of VR. It's dangerous and it's expensive. Yeah. So when will the project uh, be finished? Uh, 
We are launching in October this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking with the Adelaide Film Festival about the premiere at that, um, and also with the South Australian Museum who, who are hosting this. Um, it's still all being worked out, so mm -hmm. I'm not locking anything in in this sure, conversation. Sure. Yep. Um, but Thin Ice is, a, is, is not just an isolated experience. It's much larger than that. So um, it'll continue to live on beyond that premiere. Uh, and It'll go around the world. It'll go around the world. Yeah. Uh, we hope to see it installed in museums in, in many different countries. I'm working with uh, my students right now, actually, because I'm still lecturing as well as directing, mm -hmm. uh, to sort of think about what sits in, around Thin Ice. We have the core um, VR experience, but what else sits around that? What else might people need to know about um, the heroic age of exploration or about climate change? Yeah. And has all the filming been complete or do you still have more to go? Most of it. Yeah. Most of it's been complete. Thanks to um, uh, some pretty harsh weather, we couldn't mm -hmm. get every location that Shackleton went to. There's this one place called Elephant Island, which sits um, right off the tip of Antarctica and it is um, a very hazardous place to get to. And unfortunately we couldn't get to it this time. It's we, the elephant in the room of your project. It is, it is. <laughs> and it's such a significant place. But we are you can recreate, trying perhaps. to go back there. Yeah. I okay. mean, we, this Thin Ice is very authentic. Yeah. Everything that you see in Thin it's Ice real. is the actual place. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and what you're the director and there's mm -hmm. uh, the other gentleman who's the explorer. So how many people are involved? What's the short version of sort of how many people you need and editors and uh, VR specialists? I mean, what's yeah. the sh run, short rundown? Okay. we. Tim Jarvis is the presenter. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the expert. He'll be in Thin Ice VR as an actual character be, that you can talk to. Yeah, he'll be, okay. Uh, and Monkey Stack, uh, they're producing this, they're making this, they're, their expertise goes into it and a, and a team of dozens of people will work on this. You know, we have someone doing a film score, we have the animators, we have the artists, um, all working away over the next six months yeah. putting this together. And how long has it taken already? A couple of years? Oh, we've been, we first met about this project uh, a year and a half ago, just to get us to the point where we're starting production, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to conceive of the idea, um, to write the script, to plan these, um, you know, going out there and collecting material and, and everything. Yeah, it takes, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like a Hollywood production. There's a lot of cogs that have to come together to yeah. make the final product. And, yeah. you know, people don't really get a behind the scenes. Are you gonna do a sort of behind the scenes addition to this oh, I would say so yeah, yeah it would make yeah. sense people yeah. can get a, a idea of the scale so um, you know you've been uh, a uh, you've owned a film TV and a game studio so that must have mm -hmm. obviously informed a lot of what you're doing today but um, you know how do you see the um, VR becoming more mainstream I mean in the future I guess, I'm guessing we'll have uh, just you know glasses or contact lenses or something you know you, you won't have to hold controllers in your hands it'll mm -hmm. just detect your hands I mean, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is about 20, VR in the 2030s, you know, but mm -hmm. how do you see it just over the next year or two evolving? Um, yeah, that's a tricky one. I get, look, um, the technology is, is developing rapidly. We still have some, I'm no hardware expert, but there are some very difficult problems to overcome, particularly around things like optics, okay? So how the lenses work and focusing distances you know, and this is aside from head tracking and screen resolution, which... And hand uh, tracking and all Yeah, that. and those things have come a long way, but just being able to put screens so close and, and have our eyes be fooled, you know... That's and everyone's a, got different types of vision yeah, and different that, focal lengths right, and all that's, the rest. That's really tricky. So to, to get to a point where they become lightweight, everyday reading glasses, which also happen to be completely VR capable, mm. I think is, you know, a, a quite a long way away. Yeah. Um, what excites me though is uh, when more and more artists and filmmakers and designers and games designers and all of that come into this space and start creating really cool experiences because mm. the hardware we have now is capable of, of, of it, right? Stuff, yeah. um, you can, I mean, you can visit theme parks, right? Where you do all sorts of VR experiences. And well, it's never been more mainstream. It's, no, and, uh, VR is, I remember 20 years ago or longer, I was. Uh, in this round mm. thing, you stepped into it, you yep. put this headset on and you saw these wireframe dinosaurs and you could yeah. shoot them and that was yeah. like two, two bucks to go. Yeah. And, and that was VR like in the yeah. 1990s. Now it's like stepping into a yeah, reality. Right. Yeah, and look, and I, I, it, 
it's really about the, the quality of the experience that someone has come up with. What do they want you to do there? If it's mm. a simulation, a movie, a game, whatever it happens to be. And that should develop quite quickly, you know, as we start bouncing off each other and exploring ideas. Um, I'm actually, uh, there's a VR conference happening in Adelaide later this week, mm -hmm. uh, Electric Dreams, it's part of the Fringe. And at that, um, Kaleidoscope are running a um, pitching event mm -hmm. and Thin Ice was selected as one of the seven projects, which is really exciting from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we did a, we've done some, some you know, meet and greets online about, you know, myself and all the other people who are pitching their projects. And it was so exciting just to see how different everyone's ideas are, mm -hmm. how to use this immersive technology. You know, that's really exciting. And a lot of people who don't have access to the gear don't know that, they don't mm. know what's out there, or if they haven't been to a, um, a gallery that has this, or a festival or an exhibition, you know, there's, yeah. So I guess I'm excited about what creators are making, and I'm excited that even with the technology we, ha technology we have, it's still yet to reach everyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I've said on many of these videos, mm. you know, William Gibson's famous statement of the future has already been invented. It just mm. hasn't been widely distributed yep. yet. Okay. And, yep. uh, and that's the case we're in today. I mean, in the central coast of New South Wales, there is a store in the entrance and uh, that store is a VR store. You go in and you can have different VR experiences. Yeah. And you know, you would never have conceived of that a few years ago. It was an arcade machine, right? But now yeah. you strap the thing on and yeah. you're the controller. You're in the middle yeah, yeah. of the action. Yeah, so look, I always like to finish off by talking about the future and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm imagining a, uh, a world of the matrix, but instead of having something shoved into the back of your brain, mm -hmm. it's like wireless, you know? And so yeah. instead of your retina as being the interface of the VR world, there's somehow wirelessly transmitting yeah. the whole experience to your brain. And then of course we have the danger that people will be stuck in VR world 24 seven, don't even know they're alive, they just, you know, but how do you think VR will be in 10 or 20 years time? You know, that sort of reality or? I'm, I'm far more optimistic than you are, I think. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Maybe not. No, I'm not optimistic. Realistic. Realistic, sorry, my yeah. bad. Uh, I, look, I, I just want to see um, uh, headsets which let you really go to the full VR extent of replacing reality yeah. to the simplest and the, the smallest amount of augmented reality. Um, and just so that it's comfortable to wear for mm. a couple of hours. It doesn't fog up. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't fog up. It yeah. doesn't... You know, when people take off headsets, they look like they're drunk. It, honestly, I, and you just, when I te demo things I, afterwards, I say, look, please, you know, grab a drink, sit yeah. down. I would just like it to be a comfortable experience, you know, that you can go through for a few hours, watch an entire feature film mm. and be that part of it. Um, in terms of, you know, jacking in and... Well, that's why I said I want it to be wireless. So there's no jacking in. It's yeah. somehow, you know, it, it's just going beamed to, it's beamed our, to our, our optic nerve as opposed to yeah. having to go through the eyes, which are quite a, I mean, if you could do that, then you could solve yeah. blindness because you just have this VR camera this goggles true. in front this of you. And, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's how they get around the, um, the lens and optics issues we have in the physical space yeah. required to do that. That's how you avoid the, fog, the fogging up business because it goes straight to Go in the eye, yeah. <laughs> as long as it's not a needle in your eye. Or something. So, look, as we get to the towards the very end of the interview, mm. I always like to change gears just a little bit and just yeah. ask you if you could please share the best advice that you've ever received to help you get where you are today. Oh my goodness! You know, often it's from a parent or a teacher or a mentor in business. Uh, something that stuck with you and you always live by. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Okay. I've had so many, and yeah. they usually seem small. And I guess that's the the, the summing all of those up. Mm. Um. It's, it's things that I've felt for myself and mm -hmm. have had others confirm. Um, it, it's really, it's the sort of persistence thing. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, I, I used to have a singular vision of what I wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized life has a way of- The best changing. laid plans of mice and men. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. you know, I guess persistently pushing your way through um, is good. I guess I landed in VR by, by accident. If what was your first VR experience? Do you remember? Uh, I actually don't remember. Oh, that's really bad. But uh, I wasn't really considering doing VR. Like I said, I was, I, was, uh, I was an animator. I made films for flat screens. Yeah. Um, and VR happened kind of by a chance meeting uh, with a parent who, whose kids went to the same school and as you, mine. And you put the headset on and it was like, whoa. Well, they just said, well, we're working on this project. Are you interested? Sure, why not? Yeah. I'll give it a go. <laughs> and it kind of went off from there, so yeah. yeah. Um, and it's blossomed. 
It has, it, 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 and it seems like a bit of a perfect storm of, of the time I spent in animation, the time I spent making video games. VR just seemed like that, the next logical step yeah, that I'm absolutely. loving. Absolutely. So, what's your final message to the viewers and the, to the readers, and to you know your future, current and future students and partners in other projects you'll be doing, no doubt, yeah. in the years to come? I guess to to get into this space, right, and actually have a memorable experience in VR. They're they're out there. Whether that's going to an event at the you know even the Fringe in Adelaide, is, mm -hmm. it has the Electric Dreams conference, and they set up some immersive exhibits. It's just, just to go and and experience it. Experience it and look for really good quality ones. I mean, I hear a lot of people who say, oh, I don't like VR, it makes me feel sick. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you probably used a, a, a cheap headset or B, a poorly made experience or yeah. hopefully not C, which is all, you know, both of those. Yeah. And, and probably was some years ago. And some years without ago. Without using the modern technology that yeah, we have today. Find what's a highly rated and not free, a paid experience mm -hmm. and go and have that experience and actually see what we mean when we say we can transport you to somewhere you have never even thought of, yeah. you've never imagined, and you can be there in that space. There's a difference between Google Cardboard and HTC Vive. You there know? there is a difference, right? Yeah. It's like the Mini Miner or a Merc. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that would be my advice, is just to go out and, and look for something, seek it out and actually see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. Well, James, thank you very much for your time. I wish you the best success with Thin Ice uh, VR, yeah. and uh, I hope you have a great conference, and I hope we can talk again in the future. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Thank you.